So, Hector, without further ado, thank you. Well, Catherine, you really set the bar high. It's, you're a hard act to follow. Well, good evening. Thank you for coming out. Um, and thank you for inviting me over to San Diego. This is quite an honor to share the stage with such amazing colleagues and friends. Um, I'm a little bit sort of um, nervous, of course, but uh, ready to, to rumble. Um, so when asked about my favorite place or space in San Diego, I first went back to my initial encounter with San Diego back in 1985. My first job was in the corner of Market and Sea at Papa Pacific Associates Markets and Architects. As you might remember, uh, Market and Fifth was not the brightest, safest place to be. Uh, moving forward in 1993, when I finally relocated or located myself in San Diego, I witnessed tremendous, tremendous changes in the urban fabric. And I celebrated its successes, but also mourned its losses. The wonderful old buildings, industrial warehouses that so many of my friends had, uh, lived in and worked in uh, were all of a sudden erased for the sake of progress. Uh, one of the reasons that I was attracted to San Diego is I love the idea of an open border, a much more fluid exchange with our neighbor to the south, Tijuana. This image is very much at the heart of what I thought was possible, this connection uh, that was meant to be San Piquas. This relationship, um, incapable of making this relationship happen, I actually um, also copped out and did not select a place. In lieu of selecting a place, I consulted with my students at Woodbury School of Architecture and asked them to, um, to show me nondescript, mundane, inviting places that they felt had potential. So the, se the series of images that I'm sharing with you attempt, this is their students attempt to identify places that go unseen and how they see them possibly becoming in the future. Uh, this one student sees this underpass uh, knoll and thinks of Carlsbad transporting there. This other student uh, thinks of uh, Sobre Ruedas. It's a pop-up market on this alleyway uh, at South Evans and Main Street in Barrio Logan. And imagine with the little help of mobile vendor cards, rolling planters, hanging banners, lights, and painted asphalt, he could transform it. Another student looks at the lack of infrastructure, public infrastructure in this um, most marginalized neighborhoods where bus stops are <coughs> unmarked and no shade or anything is happening. Of course, art projects are not also there. Another student takes it a little lighter and imagines a water slide down the street of this Harrison Street. There's a down, gentle downslope. Of course, this is before our emergency water uh, issues. <laughs> but yet, this fantastic image evokes us uh, to think of the possible. Another one uh, identifies this, uh, this leftover, unresolved, um, cut-off street on Newton and, S, uh, and South 29th Street and proposes this five, uh, <coughs> five Ferris wheels, he calls it. It's actually a little playground. Another student looks at the alley right behind Woodbury and imagines a grave, a big concert area happening. Not that we not have had this at Woodbury before, but this guy goes a little bit overboard with this idea of thinking something that loud and that, uh, that low. The same student comes back with the second image and says, oh, we need salvation. And it shows us this wonderful, more passive landscape. And in this landscape, there is, of course, a religion, religiosity of, of, of a baptism happening with the chorus standing on, by the side here on Fort Fifth, uh, on, on this different side. Um, again, on another alley, a student thinks about having this El Recreo, an alternative playground uh, for, for the kids in the elementary school nearby. And they, again, turning a, a, a vacant, underused or unused uh, neighbor, um, alleyway and, and, and turn it into a playground. This other student actually um, 
uh, there's quite a few students that skateboard and this has, happens to be one of the most dangerous things to drop. There's no tube, there's just this offset of, uh, of, of levels. But imagine that with a little bit of landscape and people hanging out, this thing could be a cool skate park. Another one thinks that perhaps with a few trees around the street and having water to, to close the, the, uh, the traffic, you could actually organize a street soccer game, just like I did back in my, my, uh, my first years here working at elementary schools where Dave and I would close the street without any permission and play on the street in Golden Hill. Uh, this other art, uh, student thinks that using a, a perfect use of the uh, underside of the freeway on Washington and Pacific Highway could become a nice little gallery space for those refined people that want to come down and be part of the urban <coughs> leftovers. On this, uh, this site under the freeway, the same student thinks that perhaps we could experience the underside of Coronado Bridge by having this amazing, uh, evoking this amazing image of, uh, of different uh, modes of transportation underneath it. Um, this other one says that uh, we should just have this pop-up playgrounds, play stations that are, that are brought to any and all um, rotating, um, rotating in every uh, empty lot that we find around the city where there's a lot of kids. Um, this other one has the idea of having an inflatable water park. Again, not thinking about the critical moments that we're, we're traversing presently. <laughs> and dares to think that perhaps there could also be a panelized system that could turn into this incredibly high climbing wall. All of it there on, the, on Lincoln Avenue and, and Boundary Street. Um, this other one takes this little leftover triangle uh, and thinks that, you know, the culinary vacuum uh, that exists in this neighborhood could perhaps be uh, offset by these temporary trucks that bring food and, uh, and activity to that leftover space. Again, another one looks at the space uh, behind these buildings along Main. It's actually Harbor Drive and Sicard and things that perhaps you could, you could have this playgrounds on these huge setbacks uh, from the railroad tracks. Ultimately, returning to this place that brought me, uh, I love this image because it evokes so much this happy moment uh, that the border, now that it's become reinforced, I'd much rather think of it as another site perhaps for uh, Friendship Park becoming this spring break at the border. <laughs> and we are critical about the things that we have in front of us and the things that could be in some of the places that don't seem to be just right yet, we are all more than capable of making with very little a lot. So the most sustainable way to practice, I would say, is to be resourceful. It's actually the greenest way to practice as well. So it's an invitation for all of us to think that we could do something by changing very little, and we don't have to make big gestures. It's the small gestures that make the everyday a much better place for all of us to live.